Hi everyone, this is Shanti bringing you another episode of Shanti Fine Arts. As you know, it is the month of May and the month of Mermaid where everybody is painting mermaids. Almost every day, I cannot do it almost every day, but I plan to paint about four or five different mermaid compositions in various different mediums. So today I am painting a mermaid, of course, and I am using a charcoal first and then i'm going to use oil pastels with my charcoal now this is a different kind of mermaid because typically when you think of mermaids you're thinking of a girl and fish body but this is a jellyfish mermaid i always wanted to paint a jellyfish with oil pastels for a very long time and uh, never happened so today i thought i'll do two things uh, I'll kill two birds with the same arrow. I will paint a jellyfish and I will paint a mermaid too. So that's what it is. So initially I started off with like a 2B charcoal pencil and all the charcoal uh, pencils or whatever I'm using are a part of the general charcoal pencil set. And I am working on Strathmore toned tan sketchbook uh, paper. and. Uh, these um, don't have to remember really because I have listed all the materials I've used in the video description below so you can just check those out. So after I did the initial drawing with a 2B charcoal pencil from the set, I used a blending tool which is just a regular blending tool and kind of smudged all the charcoal around because I did not want the charcoal dust to uh, get too much mixed up when I start using my oil pastels. But you don't have to be very careful about the charcoal uh, blending. Just want to push those pigments as far back as possible, as much back into the grooves of the paper. Um, then I start with my oil pastels. And as you can see, I am starting off with some yellow tones, orange tones, some nice aqua blue and some purple. And there's nothing much to explain over here. Just I'm looking at a reference photo and I'm looking at a reference photo from Pinterest of a jellyfish, just a regular jellyfish and just uh, uh, going by the colors that I'm seeing on the jellyfish. All I had to do is be a little bit careful that the direction of light is the same as uh, that on the mermaid's body when I went over to the body part. So you can see I am still just laying an initial layer of colors which already has a lot of different kinds of blues, purples, oranges, yellows. So no doubt it's a very very colorful jellyfish and then once the initial layer was laid on I'm going back to my blending tool and this time I'm using a clay shaper tool which is one of my favorite blending tools when it comes to oil pastels. And I'm pushing those pigments back because unless you push those pigments back into the paper, you do not know how much pigment is there already on the paper and how smooth it is looking and you don't know how much more pigment to put and how to go about the rest of the painting. So once that initial layer is pushed back with the blending, then I am coming back and adding additional layers. Now I'm using different colors um, like blues, crimsons, maroons, magentas, and they're like fancy colors um, or rather fancy names of the same color. So technically it's like different shades of pink um, and red rather and different shades of blue, but you know, making the contrast to work out, mixing and matching and staying true to your reference photo is what is key to this painting. Now there is a lot of ruffle like structures into uh, the bottom part of this jellyfish body. I don't know what is it's called scientifically, but to indicate all of those ruffles, you have to indicate the darker areas. And so I'm bringing in a lot of purple and blue to indicate the darker areas. And then I'm going over with the lighter areas with oranges and pinks. And I'm also using whites at parts wherever I've put in yellows for the highlights. Now I thought this is a good time to start on my background. With my in jellyfish lay down, I um, have to put in the background now to judge how much color and what kind of color I want to on, on a background and not to take away the tension from the jellyfish or jellyfish mermaid rather itself. 
So I'm adding a lot of different shades of blue. At the very bottom part, I'm adding the darker shades of blue. And as I'm going upwards, I'm getting the brighter shades of blues. So that the bottoms and the corners are kind of dark and slowly you move into the light as you go upward and inward into the painting. That's the general concept. And I will do the same when it comes to the upper part of the painting. I will go inward uh, I would go lighter as I go downward and inward, just the opposite as I'm doing right now. Anyways, so like I said, I'm going on the top part and here I'm starting off with the bright blues and I'm also adding a little bit of white here and there and especially at the top right corner, I'm adding a lot of white and a lot of lighter blues because that is going to be my light source and it's kind of like uh, I'm imagining that the mermaid is kind of reaching out towards that light source. So I'm keeping that area lighter. So obviously the other side, the left hand side of the painting has to be a lot darker. And then I'm using my blending tool to push all of this pigment back so that I can judge how light or dark actually each area is. And then I can adjust the color by adding more layers. That is a wonderful thing about working with oil pastels that you can work in multiple layers. So if you, your initial layer is not dark enough, just add another layer and blend that in. Now I'm working on the body of the mermaid. I put in some colors on the hair, um, which are generally like darker browns, blues, and a little bit of purple. And then I'm moving on to the body or rather the like the skin of the mermaid. I'm using very dark browns, lighter browns, and some kind of duller, uh, earthier skin tone kind of colors. Um, I'm not using any fleshed in kind of color because it's an underwater scene. So I'm imagining that it's kind of obscured and it's more gray and more dull because the you're looking through water into the body so it's not going to be bright um, skin color like it would be under say if it's a, if the body is under the sun um, in a bright sunny day so you get the point anyway so after i put on this initial layer of colors you have to blend in the colors and uh, to understand how much pigment is there and then i'm going around the edges to kind of clean up the details with the edge with the sharper end of my blending tool to understand where, which area needs how much work with the uh, details. Now in this painting, I will have to do all uh, or rather in, not I will have to do I what I did is that I used a lot of the charcoals, um, the lighter uh, areas I used white charcoal pencil that came in the same charcoal set. And for the dark areas like flyaway hair and dark lines for the eyes and eyelashes. I used the carbon pencil that came with the charcoal set. Um, and so using these pencils, what it does is it makes my job a little bit easier to get the very, very fine details. I'm not saying that it's an, you cannot get fine details with all pastels itself. You can. And there are several different ways to do that. And I have them listed in uh, my video, which I will have an up, uh, which I will have linked in the iCard and video description where I told you about eight different ways to get fine details with oil pastels but this is an alternate way you can use totally archival uh, using the charcoal pencils and uh, lighter charcoal pencils and darker charcoal pencils now when you're using the white charcoal pencil note that it will not show up as much as the darker pencils of wood and what is necessarily is doing is scratching or scraping through your darker layers to put in this lighter layers so you have, will have to kind of rely a little bit on the contrast. However, the darker carbon pencil works wonderfully. You can get very, very fine detail, but if you don't have this pencil, but instead you have an oil-based pencil like black polychromos or dark brown polychromos or Derwent Soft is also a very good uh, oil-based pencil to use for these kind of purposes, just like flyaway hairs or teeny tiny details if you do not want to do it with oil pastels. I'm just trying, I always experiment with different tools and different substances uh, to find out easier, newer ways because 
not everything is as easy or as simple or you know not everybody likes to do everything the same way so i always try and to come up with new more ways to do different things so you can find out which way you prefer more and then stick to that way uh, for me uh, my way that i like most is experimenting i want to try new things and find out new things and kind of compare how one technique is kind of better than the other and things like that so back to the jellyfish again now i'm adding some loose strands um, i call them tentacles on jellyfish and i don't know what their scientific term is i'm sorry i'm not very conversant with mar marine biology and their uh, scientific terms so i'm adding some tentacles with blues some with whites when where i added whites i also went over those whites with a little bit of yellow to get a little glowing effect you can see that i've already used a lot of bright white uh, highlights in different parts of the jellyfish i think if if you absolutely do not want to paint a mermaid that's totally fine but this it this jellyfish itself will make a wonderful wonderful oil pastel painting and with that we come to the end of the painting i hope you enjoyed uh, watching this as much as i enjoyed painting this and if you did give me a thumbs up and don't forget forget to uh, subscribe to watch all the next upcoming videos thank you